The Old West was a place where justice was often meted out at the end of a gun barrel. In the lawless towns and dusty streets of the time, there were many fearsome gunmen. And Wyatt Earp is one of them. He is best known among the border attorneys of the American West. His calm demeanor and soft voice, coupled with his unyielding courage and tenacity, have helped him survive countless gunfights, including the infamous O.K. Corral shooting in Tombstone, Arizona. Wyatt Barry Stapp Earp was born on March 19, 1848 in Monmouth, Illinois, to Nicholas Earp and Virginia Earp. Nicholas is a former farmer and military veteran turned lawyer. When Wyatt was born, his two older brothers, James and Virgil, were seven and five years old, respectively. He also has an older sister named Martha, who is three years old. The family later moved to Iowa, where Nicholas established a farm. Nicholas was imbued with a love for the law. He passed it on to his children, and Wyatt was no exception. In 1864, the family moved to Colton, California, near San Bernardino. Wyatt received his first gun, a handgun and rifle combination, to help protect his family from Indian attacks. He used to practice with his pistol every day and his shooting skills became very proficient. Wyatt initially worked as a team and railroad worker when he arrived in California. However, he soon began venturing back to the east, where he worked as a hunter. His experience in these roles helped shape his personality and prepared him for the challenges he would face later in life. After arriving in Lamar, Missouri in 1870, Wyatt Earp found love and married Eurilla Sutherland. However, their time together was tragically short, within a year of their marriage, Eurilla died. The exact cause of her death remains a point of historical debate. Some reports suggest that Eurilla died in childbirth, while others suggest that she may have been severely injured in an accident. Wyatt Earp's journey after his wife's tragic death brought him to Indian Territory, now Oklahoma, where he worked as a driver and buffalo hunter. However, he soon got into trouble with the law when he and his two companions were accused of theft. Posting bail, Wyatt fled to Kansas before the trial. In Kansas City, 1871, Wyatt had the opportunity to meet some of the most famous Western legends, including Wild Bill Hickok, Buffalo Bill Cody, Jack Gallagher, and Billy Dixon. Wyatt deeply admires Wild Bill, whom he considers the deadliest gunman in the Old West, and learns from him how to be a better hunter. During his time in Kansas, Wyatt also met Bat Masterson on the vast prairie. In August 1873, the legend of Earp began in Ellsworth, Kansas, a railroad head where huge herds of cattle were herded north from Texas. The town is wild with drunken cowboys, including notorious assassins Billy and Ben Thompson, who would rather resort to gunfights than settle an argument. In the spring of 1874, Wyatt Earp set off for Wichita, Kansas, another town in the Wild West. He works as a part-time lawyer and city maintenance worker, which helps him earn a living. However, his police career came to an abrupt end when he got into a fight with William Smith, who was running for city sheriff against his friend Mike Marr. As a result, Wyatt was fired from the police force. Furthermore, Wyatt was nearly arrested for discharging a weapon in public. While the case was an accident, it doesn't reflect well on Wyatt as an attorney. He was sitting with his feet on a table in a local pub when suddenly his pistol fell out of its holster and fell to the floor, exploding. Fortunately, the bullet hit the table at that time, causing no major damage. Worse still, there are reports that Wyatt stole the city's tax money before turning it over to Dodge. Although the truth of these reports is uncertain, they suggest that Wyatt's reputation was tarnished during his time in Wichita. In the spring of 1876, cattle ranching turned westward, bringing Wyatt to Dodge City. The town is famous for its lawlessness, where hunters, railway workers, soldiers and drifters flock after their excursions. At the end of the day, they indulge in a variety of pubs, gambling houses, and brothels. 
Naturally, gunfights were common and the people of Dodge City feared for their lives. The mayor of Dodge recommended Wyatt as deputy field marshal in Dodge. Larry Deeger, the previous officer, was overwhelmed and shot in the back and fled the violent town. He and the others warmly welcomed Wyatt to his new position. To keep the town under control, Wyatt hired four deputy assistants, including his old hunter friend Bat Masterson, Charlie Bassett's, Tillman Bill, and Neil Brown. In an effort to bring order to the Wild West town of Dodge City, new attorneys initiated a deadline deadline on Front Street, north of the railroad yard, to try to keep the commercial area of the peaceful city. An ordinance was passed to ban the wearing or carrying of firearms in the north ahead of time. However, lawlessness continued in the south, where pubs, brothels and gunfights were frequent. Gun regulations are enforced around the clock and anyone carrying a gun is arrested immediately. In his new role as deputy field marshal, Wyatt Earp is tasked with tracking down Dave Rudabaugh, the notorious outlaw who hijacked the train. Wyatt chased Rudabaugh 400 miles to Fort Griffin, Texas, where he learned that Rudabaugh had been seen at the biggest pub in town, Shanzi's. Owner John Shansi directed Wyatt to Doc Holliday, who played cards with Rudabaugh. Despite Holliday's reputation for not liking lawyers, he gladly helped and informed Wyatt that Rudabaugh was back in Kansas. Wyatt passed this information on to Bat Masterson, the sheriff of the city of Dodge, which resulted in Rudabaugh's arrest. Wyatt and Doc Holliday formed a close friendship during their time at Shanzi's Pub, a friendship that lasted for many years. In the fall of 1876, Wyatt and his brother Morgan left Dodge City in search of gold in the Black Hills of South Dakota. However, they returned to Dodge in May 1877 at the request of the new mayor, James H. Dog Kelly, to help defend the town against the Texas Cowboys who were planning an attack. Upon returning to Dodge, Wyatt was appointed the new town governor, replacing his brother Morgan. He called for harsher sentences, banned some men from entering town and organized a civil commission to help keep the streets safe. Wyatt Earp's time in Dodge City cemented his reputation as a lawyer and gradually established him as a legend of the Wild West. Dodge City, once a wild cowboy frontier town, began to be peaceful in 1879. Virgil Earp, a police officer in the Confederate Territory of Arizona, wrote to his brother. Wyatt about opportunities in the booming silver mining town of Tombstone. He decided to move there, as Dodge had lost its appeal to those looking for new challenges. When he arrived at Tombstone in December 1879, Wyatt planned to open a large stage. However, after careful research with his brother, he discovered that it was very risky and difficult to succeed. Instead, he bought the gambling franchise at the Oriental Saloon and became the dispatcher for Wells Fargo shipments. His brother James opened a tavern on Allen Street, while Virgil was serving as deputy marshal of Tombstone. Wyatt's other brother, Morgan, also came to work as an attorney. Doc Holliday, who had met Big Nose Kate in Prescott, Arizona, soon joined Earps in Tombstone. Tombstone is a desolate town, rife with robbers, gunmen, gamblers and prostitutes. The infamous Clanton gang was also active in the area, and they quickly became hostile to the Earps. The gang, which includes the Clanton brothers, Ike, Finn and Billy, the McClowry brothers, Frank and Tom, Curly Bill Brocious, John Ringo, and their followers, are not pleased with Earps appearance. The Clantons have long since herded cattle from Old Mexico and brought their spoils north to their ranch on the San Pedro River. They kept Cochise County Sheriff John Bean on their payroll, and their operation was very successful until Earps came along and changed that. In July 1880, John Bean unexpectedly offered Wyatt Earp the job of deputy sheriff under Sheriff Fred White. However, Earp became suspicious of the offer and concluded that it was an attempt to keep him too busy protecting the Wells Fargo stage, thus giving the Clantons access to lucrative heists. Despite his suspicions, Earp accepted the job, but convinced Wells Fargo to hire his brother Morgan as his new bodyguard, effectively thwarting Bean's plan. 
The Clantons were not happy with this. One day in October 1880, Curly Bill Brocious, along with Billy Clanton, Frank and Tom McClowry, were harassing people on Allen Street by firing their weapons. When Sheriff White tried to stop them, Brocious pulled out his gun and in the ensuing standoff, White was shot in the groin. Earp was furious, immediately to the scene, knocking Curly Bill unconscious with his pistol. White before his death felt very sorry for his carelessness. After White's death, Earp confronts the gunmen and orders them to leave town, claiming that he will kill any of them for a weapon. However, Curly Bill was eventually freed from prison thanks to White's death statement. Meanwhile, Doc Holliday was accused by John Bean of manipulating the faro game while gambling at the Oriental Saloon. Holliday challenged Bean, who quickly backed down. Bean's public embarrassment further increased tensions between the two factions. Throughout the early months of 1881, the Clantons continued to drive cattle from Mexico, a crime that Earp's lawyers were unable to prevent. The split between the legal and the outlaws grew, causing the town to split into two factions. While most citizens supported the Earps, the politically powerful outlaws, with Bean's control, supported the Clantons. The Gunfight at the OK Corral On Tuesday night, October 25, 1881, Ike Clanton spent the day drinking and threatening Earps and Doc Holliday. He went to the Occidental Saloon that night to play cards with Tom McClowry. However, when Doc Holliday heard about Clanton's threats, he confronted him at the pub. Virgil, Wyatt and Morgan Earp are also present in this confrontation. Virgil, the Vice Marshal of the United States, warned Doc and Ike that he would arrest them if they continued to argue. Despite earlier brags of violence, Clanton was unarmed, and Virgil managed to lure Holiday away. However, Clanton promised to return the next day with the others to kill Holiday. As Wyatt Earp was walking down the street, Clanton saw and insulted him, saying, Tell your attrition friend, your Arizona nightmare. He's a man who dies tomorrow but Wyatt was quick to respond, Don't get in the way of Doc Holiday. he'll kill you before you even start. Clanton's farewell shot was, Get ready for a match. The next day, October 26, Clanton and his gang, including Tom, Frank McClowry and Billy Clanton, arrived at Tombstone armed and ready for a duel. They encountered Earps and Holiday near OK Coral. The ensuing gunfight lasted only 30 seconds, but it resulted in the deaths of Billy Clanton and the McClowry brothers, and Earps and Holiday were charged with murder. The events leading up to the gunfight at the OK Corral highlights the tension and violence that plagued the town of Tombstone in the 1880s. Earps and Doc Holliday are seen as lawmakers trying to bring order to a town ravaged by outlaws and other baddies. While the Clanton gang and their supporters are considered lawless elements, the gunfight itself was the culmination of this tension and led to one of the most famous mass shootings in American history. Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday formed a deadly partnership that eliminated many outlaws in just over a year. The list of their victims includes the infamous Old Man Clanton, Billy Clanton, Frank McClowry, Tom McClowry, Frank Stilwell, Indian Charlie, Dixie Gray, Florentino Cruz, Johnny Barnes, Jim Crane, Harry Head, Bill Leonard, Joe Hill, Luther King, Charlie Snow, Billy Lang, Zwing Hunt, Billy Grounds and Hank Swilling. One of the gang members, Pete Spence, eventually turned himself in to the authorities. In May 1882, Earp and Holliday left Tombstone, never to return, but before leaving they vowed revenge against the remaining outlaws, Ringo, Clanton, Spence and Swilling, if they could be found. Wyatt Earp and his wife Josie returned to Dodge City, Kansas in 1883, then they toured Texas and northern Mexico before heading to California. During this time, Doc Holliday's health continued to decline, leading him to move from Leadville to Denver in the winter of 1885. Despite his worsening condition, Holliday was able to reunite with his old friend Wyatt Earp. 
in the late winter of 1886 at the Windsor Hotel. Some time later, Doc Holliday passed away. Wyatt and Josie spent some time in San Bernardino with the Earp family and also visited the Josie family in San Francisco during their time in California. Wyatt continued to engage in boxing matches, gamble, and invest in real estate, pubs, and racehorses. When the gold rush hit Alaska in 1897, they went to Nome and opened a tavern during the fever's peak. They also searched for gold in the Yukon and made substantial profits before returning to California in 1901 with about $80,000. However, their stay in California was short when they heard of a gold raid in Tonopa, Nevada. Wyatt has placed several claims in the Mojave Desert and even discovered the field near Vidal, California, where they spent the winter in a cottage. During their summer vacation in Los Angeles, Wyatt befriended several early Hollywood actors and became a mentor to several Western actors during the silent film days. Wyatt Earp died in Los Angeles on January 13, 1929, at the age of 80 of prostate cancer. His cremated ashes were interred at Josie's family estate in Colma, California, where Josie was later buried beside him in 1944. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below, so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.